Hey guys, Django here. Welcome to today's realistic review in which we are taking a look at a Helldiver, this time the SB2C4, sitting at 3.7 battle rating, the bigger brother of the earlier 1C. This plane is just as amazing and it has some interesting options which make it even better. This is a later version, so it has a much better engine and thus it has some increased performance that coincides with the um, with the higher battle rating so there is that but it is basically the same plane with the same philosophy around it as the 1C and it is a ton of fun people don't expect what this plane has to offer and this plane also has gun pots with four extra 50 cals added to the two 20 millimeter guns which makes it a beast absolutely fantastic plane great air brake on her for you to slow down in the lower ends of the dive as well to make you not overshoot or to make somebody else overshoot on you which is uh, always nice to have air brake a good very good air brake actually this one well the maximum speed in this plane at sea level without web is 406 kilometers an hour with web 421 at 4500 meters she can go up to 342 without web 443 with web, it's, it's really not much of a difference. Stops working at a certain altitude before 4500 meters. And finally, at 6500 meters, you can take this plane both with and without web at 327. That is a huge amount faster than the 1C, which had 246, I believe. So, th this plane high altitude performance is much better than the 1C. But even at sea level, she's 30 kilometers an hour faster. Now, she's still a slow plane, but 30 kilometers an hour is nothing to sniff at. She's quite a bit faster, and that is a good thing to have. Top speed in a dive is the same with 623 for the red line and 710 before she rips apart. Then you have the control stiffening, which happens around 400 kilometers an hour and 500 kilometers an hour for a second tick uh, tif in that aileron compression which uh, really um, makes uh, yeah, not too much of a difference for this plane anyway because you don't want to go in long dives anyway. I had a bug in this match by the way, as you see I'm quite damaged but I have no damage. So something triggered the damage model but uh, I don't know what it was. <laughs> Maybe a glancing blow or a deflected shot or something, I don't know. Stall speed in this plane is 80 kilometers an hour which is actually quite nice. She really keeps hanging in there, but she's not great in the vertical, right? The vertical energy retention is bad, but that stall speed is uh, nothing to sniff at. Firepower in this plane is good. You have two 20 millimeter A and M2 cannons with 200 rounds per gun. And then you have the option to add four 50 cals to that with the gun pods, M2 Browning machine guns, four of them uh, with uh, 360 rounds per gun which is nice it's the option you should take i believe but it's not the only option you have in this plane you can also equip bombs and rockets you can equip a mine you can equip torpedoes and then you have those balls which i would say take them because that makes this fantastic you also have a turret uh, a double 7.62 millimeter uh, machine gun uh, turret with a thousand rounds per gun what bells did I use? Well, as I, I went through these before for, for the 1C, but you have for the 20 millimeters, you can use the, all the belts actually, the default ground, air and stealth belt. You have the um, armor piercing tracer uh, shell and you have the heavy shells. The default belt is 50-50 on that. The ground belt has um, three APT shells, more, more armor piercing heavy. The air belt has three heavy belts and one APT and the stealth belt has three heavy shells. So there, and there's the surprise factor in that one as well. So I personally use the air belt because of the heavies and I wanted some tracer in there. But if you want to use the stealth belt, you do have the most heavy high explosive fragmentation incendiary composure in that, which is best for, uh, for ARB. But all of them are uh, very usable and um, definitely viable. 50 cals, you have the default the universal ground target and the tracer plus the stealth. You have all combinations of AP, API, tracer shells and incendiary shells. They have different composition when it comes to that. If you want to go a little bit more incendiary, I would go universal or tracer. 
if if you want to go stealth for the surprise factor take stealth the default is a little bit of a mix and ground target is more ap heavy so there's there's always those mixtures in choice look carefully at what the belt contains and and think what you want to use it for more incendiary is often good for, for the 50 cals for um, creating fire shooting planes down if you want to go ground pounding the ap shell heavy belts are more to your liking if you want to go stealth go stealth stealth is always nice it has that surprise factor so a lot of armament on this plane and and very yeah good firepower uh, very good ammo load the performance of this plane for the rest is nothing to write home about as with the 1c acceleration is average in a straight line in the dive it's actually good it's quite decent in the dive not initially but once you build up a little bit it's, it's quite good energy retention is average in the horizontal and in the vertical it's actually bad Climb rate in the plane is bad, but that's not a problem because you get a high bomber spawn which makes it possible for this plane to uh, get up to altitude, especially on s uh, small and medium maps. On the larger maps or the maps with air starts, you are a little bit in the disadvantage. Those maps don't work too well for this plane. You've got to hang back a little bit and, and just wait for the fighters and just then mix in with them. You know, it will still work, but it's not ideal for this plane, let's say that. Turn time in the plane is decent, good with flaps. Flaps rip off at around 600 kilometers an hour on this one, maybe because of the pots, I don't know. But they ripped off a little bit earlier than the 1C version. Roll rate below average. It's bad over the top, but for adjusting your shots, as long as you don't go over the top, it's actually average, it's quite nice. Um, uh, maneuverability uh, is overall uh, above average. Especially with that turn time is so nice that many fighters don't expect you to, to uh, be that uh, good. And uh, you often shoot them down with the heavy firepower this plane holds, which is fantastic. Overheating in this plane is not an issue. It uh, cools off quite easily. And um, as it does overheat, but, but you just don't really have to worry about it. It's easily managed. Durability is decent, it can take a hit or two, does take damage reasonably well, that is not too much of an issue right there for this plane. Um, then we go to the repair cost. The repair cost in this plane is 2955 silver lines, which for a 3.7 battle rating is about average, sits in the average range. There's planes that are more expensive to repair, there's planes that are cheaper to repair, it's all right, I guess. The rewards in this plane, for the research points, you have a 284% modifier, and the Silver Lion one has a 150% modifier. The research point modifier is strengthened with the 1.42 calculator, and the 150% one with a 1, which makes the RP average in rewards and the Silver Lion one bad. Yeah, that is not really good. Most of them go beyond the 1, just a single 1 for the 150%. And um, yeah, there is that. So decent for, for going to the research uh, points and uh, unlocking new planes, but bad for the Silver Lion uh, income. Although the performance might offset that a little bit because I find this plane to be quite good in the, in the reward um, section in the end because it performs so well. You just get a lot, you just get more rewards because you get more out of matches because of that high bomber spawn, because of the firepower and because of the fact that people just get surprised by this plane very often. This plane is a close air support and support fighter and it can also turn fight uh, not with dedicated turn fighters but with anything else energy fighters boom and zoomers um, this plane can give them uh, a run for their money easily and will often win against them in maneuvering fights which is just awesome with the heavy firepower you can easily you know um, kill them off the stopping power is great so the deflection shots and they will usually work very well and um, yeah it's a great firepower man i like this plane i like the versatility of it i think it can be fantastic in ground rb as well 
I've heard many people in my squadron say that. I don't fly it myself, but I can definitely see it. You have mines, you have bombs, you have rockets. You can take it into naval with the torpedoes. You have gun pods, which work the best, I guess, in air RB, giving it this plane even more firepower. It does take away a little bit then with the pods from the maneuverability. Because hey, you've got pots hanging on you and the performance becomes a little bit less good as well. Which is already wasn't the greatest, but um, I mean with those pots you have extra drag of course. So Acceleration, energy retention is going to become a little bit harder. But uh, all in all man, this plane is very enjoyable. As you see, I've, I did take a little bit of damage here and there, but she takes it well. She doesn't immediately become unflyable when one wing is hit and stuff like that. No, she, she actually uh, does function quite correctly with some damage and often takes you home with damage. That is not uh, too much of an issue. I really, really enjoy this plane and uh, she is definitely worth your time there. So let's see the scoreboard of the 5 kill match there. We've got Survivor, Terror of the Sky, 31,000 Silver Lions and 7,300 research points. First place in the team, I'll see you in the conclusion. Hey guys, so here we are after the match. The SB2Cs are fantastic and this 4 is no exception. It has a little bit more powerful engine, it has the gun pods, I really like them. It has a wide variety of things you can take, so it's very viable in many modes. Ground RB, naval, should be uh, very enjoyable there. Good ammunition, 20mm guns are fantastic. You get that high bomber spawn, and uh, yeah man, uh, this plane performs a little better than the, uh, the, the 1C as well on higher altitudes, which is nice. She has an air brake that is fantastic. She can fulfill the role of close air support, support fighter, and she's a turn fighter coming from high altitude because officially it's a bomber, but it really feels like a very maneuverable plane coming from a bomber spawn, which is very enjoyable for a fighter pilot. So, yeah, when it comes to attackers and bombers, this is these kind of planes are often some of my favorites. A lot of shenanigans involved and um, yeah, very enjoyable to fly, guys. So I definitely recommend you to visit these SB2Cs. They are uh, quite cool. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button, become part of this community. If you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video do leave me a comment and if you really feel like helping out today make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.